Well, good day, viewers. Today we have a 2011 F-150 XLT. It's here because the wrench light is on the dash and the check engine light is flashing. Looks like this has got the uh, five liter, maybe. We'll connect the scan tool and have a look at it. They're complaining about transmission problem. Oh boy, it's got a K&N filter. Cold air, hot air intake. Okay, so we're going to start a network scan. This thing has 375,000 kilometers on it. It's a work truck. We'll buy a contracting company. So let's do a network code scan. I've got the key on, engine off, clean battery charger on it. We'll see what it's got to report. They were complaining about transmission issues. Random misfire, cylinder 8, misfire, cylinder 4, misfire, misfire detected on startup, torque converter clutch, solenoid circuit open, torque converter clutch, solenoid circuit electrical fault, random misfire, that's the same tranny, same computer, sync module, protocol interface, control module, system internal failure, TPMS, key and ignition switch circuit, probably has a car starter in it. Tire pressure sensors. Let's see what the OBD2 side, P03487040. So it's got tranny problems and engine problems. I want to clear the codes, but I do want to look at data with it running. Let's see. Misfire data. Let's start it up and see what kind of codes we got, what kind of data we got out of it. Come on, you can do it. Cylinder 8, misfires 261. Okay, I'm going to start it. Injector fault. Okay, so this is active. Four, six, two, four, five. Number six cylinder seems to be the most com uh, consistent here. So I'm going to save this data. So let's try Snap-on's power balance test, see how it shows. I prefer the IDS version of the power balance test, but this one looks just like the IDS. So number four and eight. Well, let's check for spark. I don't know the history on this vehicle. I've never worked on it before, so I'm wondering if it needs to just a tune-up. Well, cylinder four and eight are the two rear cylinders. Yep, well, we'll have a look at the spark and plugs on that cylinder. So I got the number 8 ignition coil out, and I wanted to put a spark tester on it, like this one here, but unfortunately it won't stay on there, so I've connected a jumper wire directly to the coil, and then I've got it about three quarters of an inch away from this valve cover bolt, which is screwed into the aluminum cylinder head, so that gap should indicate a good spark should jump about three quarters of an inch so I'm gonna fire it up and see what it looks like it's obviously not spark got a good spark on that coil so let's pull the plug out and have a look so there's the spark plug out of this cylinder doesn't look too bad certainly doesn't look bad enough that it shouldn't be firing and it's it's been replaced it's not an OE plug I don't think they came with NGKs from the factory. So, I'm going to do a, a 
the injector flow test scan tool should do that. So I'm 99% sure that this engine supports an injector flow test. We got power balance, relative compression, misfire monitor, neutral profile correction, evap cold soak, gr gross leak test. And under output controls, we can command the injectors on and off, but where is the fuel injector balance test? I'm pretty sure it supports it, so I'm gonna fire up IDS. So I got IDS started on this thing. I'm wirelessly connected to the vehicle. Let's see what we've got for bi-directional. It may not be able to do it. It may not have a fuel rail pressure sensor on it anymore. So I know the older ones did, but I'm not sure I haven't done a 2011. Be interesting to see whether the Autel scan tool would support it or the think diag or think tool. Come on, IDS, you can do it. Wow. Well, I'll pick up when it connects finally. Well, it finally connected. It gives you the opportunity to put in a work order number. Go to the toolbox, go to uh, powertrain, misfire, fuel, so fuel economy test, fuel system test, I wonder what that is. I don't see the... Uh, Injector flow test. Why do I need to wire wire? Oh, this is a vehicle measurement module. Okay, so it obviously doesn't support it, so I can't fault snap on for it. It's looking for the vehicle measurement module, which I do not have. So this is probably going to be doing some bidirectional controls. Connect the VCM cable to the PC USB port. Connect the VCM cable to vehicle DLC. Set the ignition switch to on. Well, we're going to scrap this. So obviously they took that test feature away. So I switched numbers uh, 6 and 8 spark plug and coil. So I'm going to try IDS version of power balance and see if it shows the same thing. Still shows number 8. I'm going to listen to that injector, see if it's ticking. So listening to the injector with the stethoscope, they all sound like they're clicking. But that doesn't mean it's delivering fuel. And when I kill injector number one, it obviously misses on that cylinder. Every cylinder I kill injectors on, it misfires on. But number four and eight are not contributing. I can, can't see or hear any change in the RPM. Now those are the last two injectors on the rail. I wonder if they're clogged. Oh boy. I don't know the history on this vehicle, if this is uh, something that just happened all of a sudden or if this has been an ongoing problem. I wonder what it's going to be like to do an injector flow test on this thing. I think before we do that, we'll try a relative compression test because it's pretty simple to do. This is where the engine cranks over for 10 seconds and it watches RPM changes. So I'll get ready to do this test.
isn't that special. You can hear it when it's cranking, it has a lopiness to it. Cylinder 4 and 8 have low compression. Hmm. So I'm just going to compare this uh, snap-on relative compression test to the Ford IDS relative compression test. It says relative compression identifies a compression problem like comparing the average cranking RPM of each cylinder to the mean RPM of all cylinders. The maximum compression for a cylinder occurs when the crankshaft position signal from the previous cylinder is low. Cylinder with less compression will cause the crankshaft position sensor to accelerate more than other cylinders. The cylinder with a greater crankshaft position sensor acceleration is displayed as a percentage difference to the mean RPM. The results do not indicate how weak the cylinder might be, but how much weaker the cylinder is compared to the other cylinders. It's designed to detect only one weak cylinder in an engine one or two. So it's going to be the same thing. Uh, it waits for the key to be on and the gas pedal to the floor. So I'm going to go and do that. continue. It's not like the forward one. Test will continue when all conditions are met. Not recognizing, it's not con it's not performing the test. Let's try one more time. Key is already on. For vehicles with manual, please hold down the clutch. No, it's not a manual. Fully depress the accelerator pedal. Well, I'm going to take the scanner into the vehicle and try it. Well, this one shows number four cylinder is low. But I would put bet money that number eight is also low according to the snap-on, or sorry, according to the Ford IDS software. And I did some research on this uh, P0740 and 741 code, and chances are it's going to need transmission repairs. So this is not looking very, very uh, positive for the outcome of this truck, considering the mileage on it. I'm going to save this screen. Save screen. There we go.